Maureen Ahietaku, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you, Paul. Nice to meet you, and I'm grateful for this opportunity. You are the weather lady in uh, Ghana. How did you become uh, the weather lady? I'm a meteorologist by profession, and uh, um, when I was young, I have a passion to know more about the atmosphere, especially with the 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 term of when you play ampe, that's a local game. In our tradition, in the night, you get stuck into the atmosphere. So I think that is where the passion all began from. So um, from my primary to senior high education, I proceeded to the university to pursue meteorology in climate science at the University of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, that is in Ghana. From, from there, I graduated and I got the opportunity again to work with this institution and I had the opportunity again to travel for my further studies outside Ghana and that was in um, Iwa Women's University in South Korea, in Seoul. So I had the opportunity again to study atmospheric science and engineering. I still work with the Ghana Metrica Agency as a meteorologist. Before I travel, I was a forecaster and I, I public I predict the weather. Then later on after the studies, I've now moved into the hydro meteorology unit mainly for research work. When you're doing your weather forecast, what are some of the things that you look at? We look at first, you need to know the season in which you are. That's one key thing you need to know. Then we use the satellite products. We use the um, models. Also, we, we, we run our local models here. We also use that. And then you need to use the observation from the station. So those are local observation in terms of information from your area, ground truth observation. This helps you to validate what the models and then the satellite informations are saying um, regards to your area of con uh, consideration or, or, or area of study. So you also look out for the moisture, so that's the relative humidity. And we look out for um, um, the energy in the atmosphere, that's the cape also tend to see whether the energy in the atmosphere is enough when we have the heating or insulation. When you talk to your friends, uh, when you interact uh, with uh, the people who don't know about uh, the weather, what are some of the things uh, they, what what kind of questions are people asking you? Yeah, mostly, that, that is the question. The moment you mention, oh, I'm a meteorologist or I work with the weather institution, everybody will just want to know, Okay, will it rain today or will it will it not rain? And or what will be the weather for in the few days? That these are some of the questions that they will pose to you to know whether it will rain or not. A lot of uh, people talk about uh, climate change uh, in Ghana, where you you are when you go to northern Ghana. That place is always very very hot. Uh, even in areas of Accra, I've been in Accra like around May, and it was very, very hot. I just barely, you know, stay outside. So what role do you play when it comes to maybe telling your friends about the climate change? On, on a weekly basis, the forecasters come up with their forecasts. So um, per my unit, which is more of hydrometeorology, we um, co collect more of the rainfall information across the country try to analyze this to see whether the forecast that was given, um, how it performed over the various areas. So we process this into um, um, a map of visualized data for, for the forecasters to use. Aside that, too, we, we, we run models to see how um, these rainfall patterns will be in the weeks ahead of time. So we also give this also to the forecasters to use in conjunction with the other satellite products as well. Also, we undertake research to find out as, as you make climate change, a lot of people, well, especially with the high impact in terms of flood that we are getting, people are being affected. So um, a lot of people will be like, is it the heavy rainfalls that we are getting that is causing this flood? So we undertake a research to see whether these floods are actually meteorologically induced or are they are from human activities. And this study is online as we undertake meteorological analysis of flood within Ghana. We look at two cities and we've realized that um, currently the storms that track over our regions 
Naturally, yes, they, some of them produce heavy rainfall, but most of the flood that we are experiencing are due to human impacts. Like we have choke drag gutters, less um, uh, drainage systems are not even there. Not a lot of places are being paved, so the water is not even able to percolate well into the soil. So they run off, causing floods around. Well, Maureen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.